Either, you know, you have to be living on Mars not to see the upspike of false religion and false teachings. I mean, it's just everywhere and it's so bad that uh, it's mixing itself with, 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 with Christianity and um, the New Age. And, you know, I talk about that a lot because, I mean, I see it. It's just so evident that Satan's goal to destroy biblical Christianity is not necessarily to take it away right now. It's just to mix it, merge it with a lot of different religions uh, so that it'll be so murky that it won't, it'll lose, it, it'll, it will lose its salvation power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you can't add anything to Christ. If you add something to him, you take away from him. You have to let him be Christ. Say amen. And so one of the things that Satan is doing, he's getting people to add things to Christ thinking they're going to enhance their spiritualness or spirituality when in reality they're taken away from the power of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why there's such an assault on the cross and the blood and the virgin birth and the epistles of Paul. They are under assault because Satan knows he cannot bring this false religion, this spirit of the world religion, unless he do away with certain standards or tenets of the faith. So he's attacking the foundation of believers, and that's why you're seeing people who was once walking with Christ, all of a sudden they got crystals on and op tattoos, and you're trying to figure out where do they get all this stuff at, and they leaving the church, getting into other things, changing their name, and going off in jungles and stuff. This is because they, Satan knows he cannot destroy biblical Christianity until he begins to erode the foundation. Say the foundation. It's the foundation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If the foundations be removed, see, what should the righteous do? If the foundations be eroded, so Satan is attacking the foundations. That Say foundation. Foundation means what do I really believe? Talk back to me. Say what do I really believe? That's your foundation. That the Puritans have something to teach us. It's a God-entranced heart and a God-entranced stomach and a God entranced ears and eyes and all of life and experience is God in, entranced. Puritanism was part of the Reformation. To be a Puritan, you were swimming against the tide. And the Puritans were ruthless in their determination to remove everything that God was not pleased to have there. They had a revolutionary, more biblical view of what it means to be a Christian. Bunyan was a layman, but he used to gather congregations of four figures when he would be preaching to something like 3,000 people um, at six o'clock in the morning. And the Christian life was so beautiful, as he described it, so rich. I wanted to live like that, and I wanted to preach uh, like that too. We have too much of empty motivational preaching which is just saying we can do it. We can all do it. Come on, let's do it. There's no depth. We're, we're so far from the depth of the Puritans' commitment to the Word of God. That is the great, great gift they gave to us. In a secular age, it's hard to remember that there was a time when people were theologically driven. So as I understand who God is, I begin to see who I am. They were such utterly serious and joyful Christians. They knew that there was nothing in grace that coddled sin. They understood the necessity of the truths of theology to take root in their heart and in their life. If we had that view, we wouldn't need all of the other books that tell us to look inside ourselves to find the answers because we would know that this comes from God and God alone. They understood that God is everywhere and that everything concerns Him and that He sees everything and that consequently, the biggest problem in life is God if you are not right with Him. To say that you're a gospel man or woman and then to hold back from pursuing the effects of that through all of your redeemed humanity, individually and corporately, is really to make a nonsense of what we describe as salvation. And they saw this is the joy and good news we're made for. 
and therefore this is truth worth living and worth dying for. And if we are not ready and willing to lay down our lives for the truth of God, then not only is God being dishonoured, people's eternal lives are being imperiled. Are you interested in knowing the Bible? Are you interested in knowing Christ? Do you want someone to attend to the care of your soul? Then you're going to want to get to know the Puritans.